Okay, welcome back. This is News File, your most authoritative news analysis show. And uh, Falcon Properties announces to you that uh, they have plots of land for sale 70 by 100 for only 4,500 Ghana cities and a half plot for only 2,500 at Afenia. And the lands are litigation free. They are close to electricity and water. They are well demarcated. And this huge promo uh, will... Uh, and sometime very soon. So all you need to do is to visit them. And they also on Saturdays, they have uh, site visits uh, for their clients at 8 a.m. The converging point is Afenia Junction leading to Dodoa. No hassle, no wahala, and no playing games. Call Falcon Properties, 030-9025-9122 or 249 Falcon Properties, you can visit them at falconproperties.com.gh and Bank of Africa, the unique banking experience without any stress or headaches and that's what the bank is offering you. They have products that are tailored to satisfy your corporate and personal banking needs. Call Bank of Africa on 0244338226. That's 0244338226. And discover a product that suits your lifestyle and business. Bank of Africa, strong as a group and close as a partner. Uh, once again, MTN wants you to know that if you're an internet freak, you love to chat with your friends and family, you can plug into unlimited internet on MTN and enjoy your freedom on the go. Enjoy unlimited downloads anywhere, anytime at amazing speed. Just dial star 138 star 1 hash. Star 138 star 1 hash to choose your unlimited bundle. Unleash unlimited potential, unlimited possibilities with MTN unlimited internet offer. Welcome to the world of a new browsing experience. Stems and conditions supply MTN everywhere you go. Now, just uh, a few of your text messages and um, Kweku sends in this one. He says something. The problem uh, with Batu Nodro's case is that uh, this isn't just a matter of opinion over some um, abstract point of law. This is a matter over the taxpayers' money, public funds, at a time of great national economic distress is the effect of the loss of this money on the national economy that we are talking about. Abdul Aziz says, Kukubako talking about morality. Where was morality when he defended Jacob Echebe Lamte's Bangalore saga? Uh, this is hypocrisy. Okay, uh, Fuse Fuseini Safianu. Oh, uh, Kuku, please. Sorry. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry. 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 Sorry, gentlemen. Okay, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Uh, Fuseini Safianu says, uh, sent from Savligo Samson. Um, is it legally acceptable for an offender to serve two different sentences for one offense? That's not correct. That's uh, what we call a principle against job double jeopardy. What's and you say, why is Eric Martin being detained? Of course, what you should know is a different offense that they are talking about. So uh, when you, you have different offenses, you can go in for as many times as the offenses persist. Um, Corley C C Clarence says, these guys at the airport were in discipline and have uh, told us that you can deal in drugs and still be appreciated <laughs> for these. Uh, and these are signs of indiscipline for members of the party. Why can't the police apprehend them? Why, the police cannot arrest them. They have not committed any crime. Um, Ibrahim Kopa okay, um, says that the fact that Amwating was convicted on grounds of drugs-related issues doesn't necessarily mean that he should be done away with in his social dealings. Even the likes of... okay. I will not be part of the names you want me to mention. I'm sorry. Uh, Nana Akwesi Asafwe J in Amsterdam says, Hello, Samson. Um, I, as a member of the NPP, will take exception to what Sam George is saying. Did the NPP issue an official statement to welcome him? Talking of people who flout the law, has he forgotten of um, Kwame Pipra, etc., and all of them? Okay. 
Thank you very much. You say that is propaganda and that he should stop. Um, this is Kwesi in Mangwa. Say Fifi Kwete should not behave like a saint. Does he expect people to reject Mr. Amwating or what? Um, okay. Thank you very much for your comments. Now, let's go to IMF, the International Monetary Fund. We have gone there for rescue because our economy is reeling under some very disturbing uh, situations. The president at this point in time. And you've heard, and I have also heard, and we've all heard the various suggestions that have been made by especially members of the opposition as to us being in a state of doom and gloom with our economy and that's the reason why we are going to beg for a bailout. I haven't heard the word bailout being used by the government in any of his discussions around this IMF issue. The IMF offers support to countries in three ways. Technical assistance or in loans basically where they actually help you to rebuild your international reserves and then help you to stabilize your currency which is something I think we need right now, stabilization of our currency. And then surveillance in line with Article 4 of its, of, of its um, mandate. You ask yourself, where is Ghana now? And the suggestion being made across many media platforms is the fact that we have mismanaged the economy. And that's why we have to go to the IMF. Something. There are basically five main reasons why we are going to the IMF, or why the president has asked us to open discussions with not just the IMF, but the IMF and development partners. This whole discussion has been skewed to be about the IMF. If you read the statement that was signed by Dr. Omani Boama, it states that, and let me even just quote that, it says, lastly, the president directed that immediate initiatives be taken to open discussions with the International Monetary Fund and other development partners in support of our program for stabilization and growth. On this show, we are discussing the subscription to IMF. Oh, yes, but we need to, we need to bear in mind that this is not just a one a skewed move by government. It, it, it goes beyond just the IMF to our development partners. The reasons why we are going, there are five reasons. Mm -hmm. The first of them is the dropping price of cocoa and gold. Now, this cannot be attributed to mismanagement by the Mahama administration. He, the government of Ghana does not determine the, the prices of gold and cocoa on the market. Prices of co gold and cocoa have been dropping. Two, the fact that we've had what we call a grant farming from our development partners. Our development partners have actually not been meeting their obligations or their pledges to us in terms of, of, of our development partners in terms of their grants. Three, the fact that we've had a long-standing energy crisis, which we are currently resolving. Okay, if you look at it, we will all attest to the facts. We've all faced the energy problems in this country. We were having six hours blackout in 48 hours. In every 48 hours, now you can go three weeks and have a six-hour blackout. We clearly have an improving situation. With the coming on of the MCA Compact 2, we should even see better, better results. And then the $5 billion from the World Bank, which is supposed to be <coughs> aiming at energy in the country, in, in, on the African continent. Four, as the, what Fifi the, the third, you said, what's, what's the head of that? The long-standing energy crisis. Long-standing energy crisis. Okay. Clearly, which mm -hmm. has affected production. Right. You've explained that. Go to Good. the fourth. The fourth one is the high salaries and wages we have paid. Okay, we have shot up from three billion to about nine billion this year. The estimates are that we'll pay 10.2 billion in wages, Ghana cities. Okay, that 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 gives you um, a wage to GDP ratio of 56 percent, whereas the West African average is 35 percent. What is it? 66? 56%. Including arrears. 56% is what of our revenue for this year is what we are paying as wages. I'm Including giving you this arrears. year's figures. <laughs> okay. Then five, the last, the last point, the fifth point, is our over-reliance on imports. In 2013, for, for products, for the for next, these four products, rice, poultry, cooking oil, and sugar, we imported 1.5 billion US dollars worth of this. These are the five cardinal issues which the economic advisory team basically has identified as the reasons why we are where we are and we need to look at options that exist. And two of those options are the IMF and our development partners. Mm. And, and, now, these, and, these, and these things that you mentioned, the reasons, Yes. one will ask what's, what's really new about them. 
um, drop in the price of cocoa and gold? Is it the first time we're experiencing that? And ought that be the reason why we have to go, you know, begging, uh, grant, farming, begging. grant farming from development partners? Yeah. Questioning is, how did we get there? You the know, fact that we're now lower middle income how did, okay. has influenced that uh, uh, long-standing energy crisis. Not new, is it? Well, well, let me let me let me address the issues from the first one. The drop in gold and cocoa prices. If you actually look at the international market and you look at the charts to show you, it will tell you that from 2002, gold and cocoa prices started rising and they rose steadily till about 2010, where they plateaued, and then they started dropping in 20, in the last part of 2012. So clearly, if you look at the international market pricing of gold and cocoa. From 2002 to 2012, we had a 10-year continuous rise in the prices of these two commodities. Now, these are the main earners for the, for the government of Ghana in terms of forex revenue. You understand me? So when you have a drop in this, a consistent drop in this, look at what's happening to the gold companies. They're laying off workers because of the pinch they are facing. From, so if, if, if the gold companies themselves, not just in Ghana, across the African continent, okay. the beers and even who even do diamond, and the South African mines, many of them are laying off workers. If the companies themselves are feeling the pinch, how much more the government who gets royalties from what those companies earn? This is a reality. When you look at, but then the most important thing for us to ask ourselves is, has government raised its hands up in despair and is running to the, the IMF empty hand? No. Government has put together what we have called the homegrown policies. Now, this was presented to Parliament, I think somewhere in March this year. The Minister for Finance presented government homegrown policies to Parliament as part of, I think then in May, early part of May or la later part of April, as part of the Artic Article 4 review, review mechanism, we, we submitted that to the IMF. The IMF has adopted our homegrown, homegrown policies. And we are basically <coughs> working towards implementing the homegrown policies. And that's why the President speaks about policy credibility. If you had no policy, you can't be talking about credibility for the policy. Mm. We have a homegrown policy, and now what you need is to, is to build that credibility and that confidence in those policies. What are some of these policies? Mm. The fact that government is looking to transform structurally our economy. We're looking at sugar. I gave you the fifth point, 1.5 billion, importing sugar. Can't we produce, cut down those imports? So what government is looking at or what government has started doing is the re- opening of the Commander Sugar Factory and the setting up of a second factory up north. When we start producing some of this sugar locally, it will cut down on the amount of imports we are doing. If you look at rice, for example, in 2012, we imported $650 million worth of rice. Mm -hmm. In 2013, the figures have dropped <coughs> to $300 million. That's simply because government is investing. Just three weeks ago, through EDIF, the Exports Development Agri and Investment Fund, government injected $20 million U.S. dollars into local rice production, okay. to boost local rice production. When you look at also broiler, and if you look at the mid-year review that was presented to Parliament, you realize that our Greek is actually sparing our national please good. Please wrap up, yep. Oh yeah, please, I, I will, very soon, please. Our Greek is sparing our national good. And this is simply because government has decided to do um, what we call the, 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 the non-quota tariff system for importers of, of poultry, where we have earmarked 40% of the poultry market for local farmers. And so right now, the Ministry of Agri, where Fifi is the minister, has a program where every 45 days, they are turning out 1 million birds from the local market. This Thank is you. cutting down on mm. the amount of importation Importation-ing. that we will do. Thank then you I, I'm sure when I get a second bite, I'll tell you Thank exactly you. what government is seeking from the IMF. Th Thank you. Uh, sorry, but Fifi will, Fifi will deal with that, and okay. then we'll end on the issue. Now, um, Kweku, yes, we have gone to the IMF. So what? Well, we've been told by the president that the decision to opt for the IMF bailout, they don't like the word bailout. <laughs> I don't know if you can provide me with an alternative. It's an IMF program. We're entering into an IMF program. It's, there's still a swallow out there. <laughs> Well, on, on most of the international, you know, discussions that you follow on the finance matters and economic matters <coughs> on this subject, they use bailout, they use rescue. Thank you. And what I found most interesting about the president's uh, pronouncement was the fact that we we're going there in order to achieve policy credibility and also some confidence Correct. from the 
business community locally and internationally. And I found it interesting. When you go to the Senchi Forum yes, yes. report, okay. the, fine, the complete one, the, the group on macroeconomic stability, this is what they said, that the policy credibility, interestingly, mm -hmm. the group discussed extensively the importance of policy credibility for the restoration of macroeconomic stability. They noted several factors that create credib credibility problems for government in view of the public, development partners, and the financial markets. And just listen carefully to the things they listed and see whether they were internally induced or externally uh, induced. One, for two consecutive years, 2012 and 2013, macroeconomic targets have been missed. Annual budgets have not been implemented as approved by parliament. Media reviews have sometimes been used to introduce new policies rather than for an assessment of policies outlined in the budget. Four, budget outcomes have deviated significantly from forecast and therefore have tended to be perceived as not dependable. Five, there is a general perception that government tends to explain economic difficulties more by attributing causes to external factors than to domestic policies. This leads to complacency and inappropriate responses. This is very important. <laughs> Excessive spending in relation to the political cycle has undermined confidence in the commitment to macroeconomic discipline and stability. Six, six, yes, seven, announcement of policy measures, exa example, new tax measures, that are not implemented in accordance with the implementation schedule assumed in the budget. Eight, surprise changes in the foreign exchange market regulations, followed by selective revisions that suggest inadequate consultation with stakeholders or assessment of the reaction of the public. This is another important one. Then last, institutional arrangements have been proposed to deal with corruption, but high-profile cases remain to be dealt with frontally. My brother, almost 95% of this thing here are internally induced. And bottom line is lack of physical and monetary discipline. It's as simple as that. So the impression I get, the implication of what the president said to me, I mean to us, is that we are going to the IMF to get policy credibility because we had not been able ourselves to generate that policy credibility by our own conduct and management of the economic situation. It's as simple as that. It's an honest admission of failure of the internal mechanisms that we had put in place. And I like that honesty because it helps. That honesty is a very important political intangible that we all need to be able to build a consensus and to draw support from all other stakeholders that look here, we are indeed in crisis. We have an emergency on our hands. All hands on board because when the economy improves, you use why? crisis I'll be here again. The IMF itself uses the word challenge. Well, <laughs> you see, when you have a combination of challenges, it constitutes crisis. <laughs> I've said this weeks ago, <laughs> and that's exactly where we are. But you see, do we have to go into a semantic tussle? Right. No, the reality is out there, and the reality is so huge, so 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 terribly huge, that that's why we have gone for an IMF bailout at this critical moment. But you see, to be honest with you, perhaps it's premature, all these discussions we are having. I think we should wait for the package that will come out of the negotiations. From what you say, the IMF is talking of September. Am I right? Right. When we'll see something, OK? Then that is where the real discussions will begin. And the commitments that we need from organized labor and other sectors of the society, and the discipline that we would expect from the economic managers. Mm -hmm. My last point is this. The last time I checked, eh, and uh, if I'm wrong, I want somebody to challenge me factually. The last time I checked, I'm not sure this country has ever, or any government has ever gone to the IMF without a package that it had developed on itself. Look, go and check the historical narrative. Kusibu tree. They used to tell us that, oh, the ERP and the SAP was largely, you know, manufactured, quote unquote, 
by ourselves. And all we needed was the IMF endorsement. There has never been a time that we have gone out there without something that was homegrown. Except that, of course, you see, there is that uh, thing of thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. <laughs> That's what happens at the bottom line. With the IMF having a commanding uh, role to play because of our own indiscipline. That is homegrown. The indiscipline, the physical and monetary indiscipline is homegrown. Abdul Malik Kwekubaku Jr. there. The statement by the IMF the Deputy Managing Director uh, released data today, really, uh, supposed to, it says that the deputy, that, okay, so what simply they are saying is that today the IMF management has received a formal request from the Ghanaian authorities to initiate discussions on an economic program that could be supported by the IMF. The fund stands ready to help Ghana address the current economic challenges it is facing. We expect to send an IMF team to Ghana early September to initiate discussions on the program. My question to Fifi Kwete is what is expected to come out of this IMF program? And to what extent is it going to help us out of our economic situations? What does he know are likely to be the harsh conditions that we may face. Dr. Antonio Kotose says we are going to get into tougher times because we are subscribing to the IMF. Uh, quickly, uh, Yushau in Gushegu writes, Dr. Baumia early this year advised government to go to the IMF for a bailout, but what did we see? He was insulted by, uh, okay, these same people well, in the NDC. Attack. Imoro Walensi. Exactly. They said if mm -hmm. certain measures were not taken, right. then he could see this country going, going to the IMF. Uh, so it's not exact. I see. There. Okay. Uh, Ata Imoro in Walensi says something I heard government spokespersons claiming that what they are seeking from the IMF is not a bailout, but they are not telling Ghanaians in clear terms what exactly they are seeking to do. They should be candid enough. Um, okay. So, Fifi, what, what's going to come out of this? Uh, you know, Sam George gave us the five areas which are the reason for going to the IMF. Someone will ask, what is the IMF going to do about drop in prices in cocoa and gold? What's it going to do about grant farming, long-standing energy crisis, the wage bill that has, you know, ballooned and over-reliance on imports? Yeah, thank you very much, Samson. Uh, uh, Obviously, there's been a number of issues that have come up, and uh, I would, I would come to this one. But let me just try to uh, make an attempt to at least clarify a few of them. Okay. Then I can so what this. it is is that we don't have sufficient time, mm -hmm. so you have to be mindful of your time as okay. you do so that. So let's mm -hmm. say roughly uh, about how many? Let, let me just three have minutes. an idea. Three minutes. Let me have to say all this in three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's three minutes. I'll, I'll be able to. Three I'll be able to do so. <laughs> okay. I'll be able to do you, so. You start. You see how it goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. Um, First of all, when I explain the issue about cycles, uh, the point I sought to make is that <coughs> difficulties do emerge in managing an economy. It's just like driving a car. You go through bad patches, you go through smooth patches. The important thing is to reach destination. And uh, I never at any point sought to say uh, that uh, uh, some of those difficulties were not coming from internal politics or internal policies. I did admit actually that single spine was the single most difficult policy that actually has precipitated a lot of the problems we have causing the high deficits. Um, there was a concern raised about with having what you call the highest deficit. Uh, actually, if you look at it from the perspective of, of, of quantum, uh, you may be getting it right, but it's wrong. You don't look at it that way. You look at it in terms of what target you had and what you achieved. In the year 2012, in spite of even the difficulties that we had, the target was to have about 6% deficit. We ended up having 12% deficit. That means we missed it by 6%. Now, if you want to claim that that was the highest in our, in our country's receipt, you got it wrong. Because in 2008, MPP 
your, ba your target was 4% deficit. You ended up having about 15% deficit, meaning you missed it by 11% deficit. 11% each That's point. Not. That's the truth. The 2000 I said, excuse me, excuse me. You don't, yeah, but you have to stay true to the me, facts. Me. And, and you see, you guys, you, you guys, there's, there's one thing, me, there's, there's, there's one thing you have to take to note of. No, there's one, one thing you guys have to take note of. Stay true to the facts. The thing you have to take note of is that the, the discerning people who listen to this show, and I can tell you, millions listen to this show, when the show is done and we put on YouTube, after an hour, go and check how many thousands of people have gone to watch the show afterwards. What they don't like is an attempt to take us back. We want to look forward. So if you could just is move Is it ahead. possible something yes. for us to be able to educate the country to understand the issues fully. Yes, and it's I, not about going back. And it's I about gave you a question. The My issue. question I'm coming, was: I'm coming to your question. I'm saying that I'm trying to clarify some of the issues that came up mm. in order to be able to address them. Okay. Please allow me. Just that. I just that. The just time. that. Just You're that. Just that. Just that. If, I want to go if you choose, to your time. if you choose to do too much of reaction, you will end up something. not having time something. to address the something. question. Something. I will address it. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Now the clarification is this: that in 2009, in 2008. At the time when rebasing had not been done, you set a target of 4% deficit. You ended up with 15% deficit. So you don't today try to use rebasing figure to seek a justification. Yeah, but you are using rebasing figure. I'm not using rebasing figure. I will come to you. I'm not using rebasing figure. I'm using that old. Nana, you have your take. I'm using rebasing figure. I'm using the old figure. Okay, you set out to have a 4% deficit. You ended up having a 15% deficit. You miss it by 11 percentage points. We set out to have a 6%. We ended up having a 12%. We missed it by 6% point. That's not to say the 6% is great. But it's to explain that the 6% is nowhere near the 11% that you had. That's the first one. Now, if you say, for example, that it was simply on account of election, you, you're missing it again. Because, you see, Single Spine was a, was a program that started way back in 2010. It just so happened that 2012 coincided <coughs> with the final payment of it together with the area. So naturally, that had a big hit as far as the economy is concerned. And that clearly has been a difficulty. Now, when you describe that as indiscipline, I have a difficulty understanding why that amounts to indiscipline. A program aiming to be able to motivate the workers of, the people, the workers of Ghana in order for them to be far more productive and efficient, in order to help the country, you can't call that indiscipline. I'm saying that difficulties we've had, yes, but those difficulties can be explained as a result of conscious decisions that were taken to be able to support the productive base of the country. As a result of those difficulties, we need to find solutions to it in which we are doing. In that place, let not that be called indiscipline because no indiscipline. Now, issue relating to uh, 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 policy credibility, which is important. Yeah, the issue of policy credibility is true. Uh, what it is the president is trying to, to, to say is simple. That when it is you are, for example, coming out with uh, your targets, as much as possible, try not to have too much of the best case scenario. Try to, as much as possible, take into account that sometimes the best case scenario do not happen. So, for example, if you say, I'm going to aim for a 9% deficit from a 12% deficit, now, knowing exactly the kind of hydra-headed nature of the single spine, possibly, possibly, what a president say that you should rather be saying that, listen, more towards 10.5% than the 9%. But those are things that general managers of the economy, even IMF and so on, have differences of opinion. Some people will say, listen, let's go towards as much as possible best case scenario. Some people, let's stay in the middle. Some people, worst case scenario. So policy credibility is simply an issue of as much as possible. Don't go for best case scenario. Mm. Stay much more on the realistic path okay. people, in, in order to be able to okay. move forward. If you can quickly now, look at it from this way, how does going to IMF <laughs> How is the IMF going to address I was drop in prices in cocoa, uh, grant farming, long-standing energy crisis, the wage bill issue, and over-reliance on yeah, imports? I'll, I'll add that quickly to consensus that have been raised by uh, the 2012 flag bearer of the NPP uh, to the effect that the IMF uh, uh, program should be able to help address what he call issues relating to cost of doing business, employment issues, and so on. You see, it's, let's clarify something. The IMF and the World Bank are two separate wings even though they belong to the same family. But they do two separate things. The World Bank is to help in terms of growth issues, is to help in terms of infrastructure funding and so on. IMF 
purely is about making sure that you keep your deficit, meaning you live within your means. That's what the IMF does with you. IMF comes to you and says, listen, this is what your revenue projections are, and you must try to have your expenditure within that revenue package so that your deficit does not go. Because IMF consideration is that, listen, live according to your means. That's what the IMF does. Now, the reason why IMF is critical for this particular moment is what I mentioned earlier, is the fact that IMF is going to provide balance of payment support. And that balance of payment support goes to support your reserves. And with those reserves, you are able to bring about okay. greater stability. And with that stability, you provide what you call the platform to be able to accelerate growth. Thank you. That's very, really what thank you very, thank you very much. Thank you very much, about. Fifi. And um, <clears throat> okay, that's uh, how gracious I could be. Uh, thank you very much. Seven minutes instead stuff. of six. Uh, thank you. And a few of your comments too. Edward Anafo says, homegrown solutions to homegrown corruption. Oh. Um, okay, that's what you want to say. And then Kujo Anand says that I'm sorry, but the government and its spokespersons are playing darts with different rules. You throw a dart, <coughs> then draw a circle around it. Uh, wherever it hits, <laughs> blue eye. Okay, uh, bull's eye, bull's eye. Okay, interesting. It says you throw, uh, you throw a dart, then draw a circle around it. Wherever it hits, bullseye. Thank you for those of your messages. Um, okay, um, the rest of you on my wall are fighting. <laughs> I won't read your fight. Uh, Simon in Wale Wale says something. My worry is the harsh conditionalities this IMF bailout comes along with. Nana, United Kingdom, says something. Did Fifi attest to the fact that MPP did well? until 2008 hmm have a blessed day uh, apeko uh, yamfori central region says if the imf bailout is what can address the fall of the city and the current economic problems in ghana let the government go ahead and take the deal the challenges are uh, we are facing today are too much nana Ochri in kibi says if single spine is the cause of our economic problem then why do we go to IMF when we know the problem? Amankwa in Inkoko says, I was earning 460 Ghana cities in 2008, equivalent of $438 um, then. Six years on, 2014, I am earning uh, 1,200 Ghana cities, equivalent to uh, 307.69 single spine indeed uh, Nana briefly and then we take a break and we come to go to the Millennium Compact to find out how we can get we can get sorry how we can get stable stable electricity uh, affordable and efficient because that is all part of solving the economic problems because as you heard, Sam George mentioned the long-standing energy crisis. And uh, of course, we also know that the NDC has its own uh, energy for all policy by 2016. Uh, briefly, and uh, very briefly. The, you know, Fifi made a revelation that I believe is startling, even though he himself may not realize it. He says that we go to the IMF to correct the deficit. To correct the deficit? Yes, that's what you said. I think we go to IMF to be able to have support with balance of payment to shore up our reserves that we can use that as a platform to push our growth that the is the imf succinct. ensures that ensures, is sense imf ensures that you live within your means brevity so, so living within, within your means that's, that, that's what the imf is going to ensure that is the discipline yeah. and now something look at this it's very yeah. important. That's important the deficit that's living above our means mm. for which today we've gone to the IMF, right was 8.7 billion in 2012. Out of those 8.7 billion that we spent, only 1.9 is for the single spot. So over six, over six it doesn't billion were well, for something else. You don't so know what, you're, you you don't know what you're talking about. I'm giving you the You figures. don't know what you're talking about. Let, oh, fine. Fifi is there, yeah. He knows I said you don't know what you're talking about. He told Baumia that Baumia didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> the same Fifi quit. Of course, Baumia anyway. didn't even know that the single spine <laughs> was a problem. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, move yeah, on, yeah. move on. Baumia, he doesn't know. Baumia, he doesn't know. Okay, yeah. okay, Fifi. Baumia didn't know what he was talking about. He doesn't know the single spine. And today, those things that Baumia told you, that if you are not careful, your city will reach four cities by the middle of this year. That if you are not careful, you have to go to the IMF. That the 
It doesn't take rocket science yeah, to say it, so. It, it, less your respect. it doesn't no, take no, rocket no, no, science see, to say less so. Your respect. I'm not you've, you've had, you. no, you've had your I'm say. not disrespecting you. No, no, you've had your say. I'm not I didn't disrespecting you. Please. So just let me finish. And then if you have something to say, you can ask something for permission. That's not too difficult to do. Go ahead. Now what I'm saying is that, Bamiya said three things. That your city will get to four cities by the middle of the year if you are not careful. He's told you that you have to go to the IMF if you are not careful. He told you that the Bank of Ghana policies will not work. Today, all those three things that Bamiya said have come true. Yet he was told, he was describing terms that I can't even repeat. So if today me too, I've been been told I don't do anything. I said I, I don't, you don't know problem. what you're talking about. Now there's subject. deficits. Fifi is in, in describing the deficit in the NPP's time. He uses before rebates, and when he's describing the deficit in the end, this 2012, he 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 he, he does it after rebates. I mean, let's 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 have policy what credibility. What are you talking about? Let's Fifi, have Fifi, policy please, please, credibility. Please allow him to make his point. Yeah. Now we all remember when the president made the donors early 2013 when the donors told him to his face, and I have the footage on TV, that the mismanagement in 2012 was extremely distressing to them. And we had the president apologizing and promising that he would correct things. It's never happened before. Now, we are being told that uh, cocoa prices have dropped, uh, donors have not delivered. The donors were delivering until 2013. Why didn't they deliver 2013 and 2014? Because 2011 they delivered, 2012 they delivered. Why did they stop in 2013 and 2014? And we have been told it's the wage bill, which is, uh, doesn't make any, any, any reason to me at all. And then we have been told it's the structure of the economy. My brother, Samson, we've had cocoa prices ebbing and flowing, like Fifi would say. <laughs> we had cocoa prices ebbing and flowing. We've had an energy crisis in this country before, haven't we? The structure of the economy has been like this since God in Gorgis Beck, my great grandfather's days. But we never had the Ghanaian CD becoming the worst currency in the world. Something is wrong. And don't go and hide behind cocoa prices. Okay, Nana. Thank you very much. Uh, you insist. Yes, I, I give you a minute course. each. We have to move on. No, Sorry. No, hold on. Yes. No, no. Does that mean, no. That, does that, mean that was what? On this, on the, I thought we were moving on to the next subject. Yes, I, I'll take a break, at this, a break after this point. Let, let me hear you. One yes. minute, please. Basically, what we, what, what, like I, I said, I was going to talk on what we also seek, mm -hmm. what we're seeking going to the IMF. The first one is that we want to, we want to press for strong development, uh, strong development elements to the program under the African Development Bank, the species of African Development Bank and the World Bank. Take, for example, we went for an IMF program in, between 2009 and 2012, but we still maintained a strong social development compact under that program, under President Mills. And that's why it's evident that before President Mills, we had four Ghanaian children in, B in basic school sharing one textbook. Today, we've been able to move it to one Ghanaian child <coughs> having four textbooks. So there's a social element to whatever intervention we do with the IMF. Secondly, we're looking at putting Second in place... And lastly. Oh, there are just five. Let me just no, no, touch no. on them briefly. No, sorry. Secondly, mm. we're looking at an infrastructure and social development context. In the, in the line of the GSGDA, the Ghana Shared Growth and Development Agenda 2, something along those lines. We're looking at also reviewing our Petroleum Revenue Management Act as we transition into a full-fledged oil and gas economy to ensure that, and then we're also looking at our structural reforms, the gift me system, which is cutting out waste, okay? Reforms by the GRA, harmonizing mm. all of the revenue collecting agencies. The minister spoke about and that then, in and the then, And then finally, mm. finally, 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 we're also looking at a commitment by our development partners to end the grant <laughs> farming. And then finally, finally, we're looking at new mm. debt management strategies, okay? Which has like the Ghana Investment, Infrastructural Investment Fund, which is supposed to help us ring fence funding for capital intensive projects. So these are basically the supports we're looking at right. and then the balance of payment <laughs> now, support. Now, Koku, when you listen to people like uh, Richard Quest of the CNN, you, you, you will weep. The comments that he seeks to make is a sad commentary on Africa. He suggests, where, did, where, where did we go? Are we, is Africa very ever going to get out of this problem? He, he looks at Ghana, that we successfully wean ourselves out of these, you know, harsh conditionalities. And <laughs> before we say Jack, we are back to ground zero. It's and he says, he says, what is this? Is it a case? It's a structure. It's a structure. Okay, uh, let me use this uh, single spine thing mm. to illustrate the way I feel. Mm -hmm. And I, I find it difficult, I'll be honest with you, to accept the rationalization that government spokespeople give for why single spine is a challenge. 
why should I applaud or celebrate somebody or pe a group of people, and this time, this, in this case, the government, that came, saw a package, SSS, that had been crafted from 2006, due for implementation in 2009, and that in this, its presence of mind decided, no, suspend it. Let's take another look at it. So it had 12 months to review it, to recraft it, then decides to adopt it, implement it, celebrating all over the place for implementing such a thing, yeah. using it for an election campaign. Is it lack of vision? Is it lack of quality of management and in terms of implementation of that policy? So you impose on yourself a certain predicament. This is a self-inflicted predicament. And then you come back and tell me that, oh, it's a problem. It is the one killing us. I, do I celebrate that? Do I applaud that? Okay. Is that not Kuku, thanks, lack of vision, thanks, thanks, lack thanks, of a certain thanks, quality thanks in terms for, of management of a particular <laughs> policy? That's <laughs> an exercise in Th self-indictment. Thanks for, thanks, for thanks for that intervention. Thanks for that intervention. And this is the point where we take a quick break. We we'll return to see what the Millennium Challenge Compact, the second tranche, which has come, is coming, has been signed. The president was in the United States of America together with uh, Minister of Finance, uh, Tekbe, who has had a long time in the IMF. I'm sure he knows what we are going for and what the harsh times or whatever will be. But in the end, we are assured that it will bring us a lot of relief. We'll be... Welcome back. This is News File, your most authoritative news analysis show. And on News File, we put Ghana Fest. This show is brought to you by the kindest sponsorship of Bank of Africa, as strong as a group and close as a partner. Star uh, Travel Policy from Star Assurance. Star Assurance, that's your solid partner. MTN, welcome to the new world. Zipnet Internet, that's your uh, reliable residential internet facility provider. And Falcon Properties, they want you to own a property um, own a property indeed and as always my outfit is provided by Latida Fashions you call them 0204-336444 for your orders and deliveries Latida always in vogue get the best of African prints in good uh, style and color Right. Now, by consensus, uh, so, sort of, uh, this is not 11-member panel or 9-member <laughs> panel. <laughs> uh, we, we have agreed unanimously that we shelve the, the rest of the issues that we wanted to have actually uh, move on to, uh, to discuss. We would rather uh, finish up with the question of the, the issue of the IMF, because we have barely uh, 20 minutes to get out of the studio. In that respect, now, uh, Fifi, you were still looking at the aspects of what, what, what it is that we will benefit from the IMF uh, by signing on to it. But again, I've you know, uh, drawn your attention to what Dr. Anthony Akuto say also is warning that signing on to the IMF means that we're going to have harsher times ahead very tougher times ahead because we are going to have to make a lot of sacrifices. That is correct fact, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. Uh, but uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, when, when as a result of um, allowing uh, a public sector wage, I mean, to move from region of about two billion a little below two billion, I mean, at the end of 2008, and you are looking, hitting over 10 billion at the close of this year, you obviously have done something that requires the need for difficult measures. Because what it simply means is that you need to be able to look for money to be able to cover for that. Now, and how are you going to get the money to cover so, for So that? we have no option. You, you are, are, either, you are, you are, you are either, sick, you have to take the medicine you, to get you are, well. You are either going to have to raise taxes, we are going to have to cut critical expenditure. But unfortunately, the huge part of the expenditure is that happen to be the public sector wage. The second part has to do with what you call uh, uh, interests on, on your debts. And those two are virtually statutory. Very little you can do about it. 
That's why earlier on I intimated that there is a need for us as a country rising beyond the partisanship to start taking a close look at the issue of earmarking of our revenues. Because see, if we did not have the issue of earmarking of revenue, what it simply means is that a lot more of that revenue is available to the center, to the national treasury. And therefore, if this is the amount of expenditure you have to meet, this is going to salary, this is going to uh, uh, debt, and this is supposed to be going for infrastructure and so on. Specifically, you have far more money available mm. to be able to meet them. Right. So the fiscal deficit becomes lower. Mm. Specifically, now, there are going to be retrenchments in the public sector, correct? No, I mean, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot jump to some of those conclusions. Because these are these are number of options that clearly will be, will be and this discussed. is one of them. And 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 as you discuss, in fact, those options actually were even raised even in, uh, at at Senche. I mean, while organized labor was present in this case, I would say we did not reach a consensus. That's why it did not come with yes, a consensus. But now, because of the but IMF, we are, going to, we are going to be compelled to do it. You know, what I'm saying is this, that uh, IMF is not going to compel you to do anything. IMF is clearly going to tell you, listen, this is your situation. You take it or leave it. You need to be able to stay within your, your envelope. This is the amount of revenue you have. Therefore, these are the number of options you have. You either, but whichever way, you need to be close to your envelope. If your revenue envelope is 1,000, one, 1, <coughs> you need to try as much as possible to keep your expenditure close to that so your deficit is not too high. But uh, uh, it's important to explain a few of the issues that came up earlier since we are given an opportunity again. Um, my, my good brother, uh, 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 Akumia, mentioned earlier that uh, 2012, the vast portion of the deficit was not on account of single smile. It's totally wrong. Out of the 6%, which was the overrun, because as I said, explained earlier, 6% was the target, we ended up having 12. Out of the 6%, which was the overrun, about 3% of that overrun was on account of single spine. The rest of that, you can account for it, lack of grants that came, because of course, naturally, election time, a lot of donors tend to be very hesitant, so grants did not come through. Subsidies that were done on petroleum and on, on utilities, which you and I know, which all the country benefited from. I'm not, I'm interest, not sure. I'm not interest, sure. I'm not sure his debt. point. No, was the point he's I'm making not is sure that his it was point, not because of let me make this point. I'm the, not sure his point was that his point was that the single spine should not be. Uh, no, he's trying to say the single spine is it. inconsequential in that. Yes, that's what yes. he's trying to and say. It's not true. But he's I'm saying that the six percent. He's saying that before the the revenue was eight, uh, 4.8, correct? And it has shot up to 16 billion. You see, with, the coming, with the coming in Samson, of the single you allow me, you allow me to... to, no, to no, but, no, I but, don't have much time. You're no, taking all the time. No, 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 sorry, but I, I Samson, have to do... No, no, I will no. correct the No, no, impression. no, I have to do this job. So just hold on. He's saying that in 2008... I heard what he said, Samson, and I want to correct it. Is you that, don't need to repeat that. I heard what he said, and I want to try correcting that. What he explained okay, was that ahead. revenue mm. did go up. That's true. But what he failed to take into consideration is that the fact that revenue moved to that range doesn't mean all that revenue was available to the Treasury. A lot of that revenue went into earmark zones. Now you're explaining. So you don't, that's why you should <laughs> allow me to explain it. That's why you should allow me to explain the issue. <laughs> the point is, after the 6% overrun, half of that was accounted for by single spine. The remaining of it came because of shortfall in grants, subsidies. The overrun was 6%. Subsidies, the overrun was 6% because it was 6, we went to 12. So we had a 6% overrun. 3% of that 6 was single spine. <coughs> what was the total deficit? You don't seem to. I'm giving you the percentage of the, of, of, of the deficit, which was 12. Yes. We targeted 6, we ended up with 12. So Meaning you the, had a 6% six six overrun. You was Will you deficit? please allow me to explain? <laughs> ah, the 6% is the normal one approved by the fund and everybody. Mm -hmm. So as a country, for this year, I'm going to have a 6% deficit, which is allowed. So on the back of that, you make provision towards mm. how you're going to finance that. Okay. You end up running over it. Right. So in two, the 12% that I said you're was on largely point. on account mm. of mm. single spine. So okay. if you try to dis, I mean, discount single spine like Baumia sought to do, you totally are misplaced, misleading okay. the account. Now, now, because now, the single spine now, was the critical. Now, now, your, your reaction briefly? Uh, Samson, mm. you asked a question that is very petty. Singles, uh, if equity is told as a wage bill, went from two billion in two thousand and eight and today it's about ten billion. But he conveniently forgot to tell us what the revenue situation is. I said revenue goes into revenue situation. It goes into a lot of earmarking. Please, please. Yes. I give you an example. That revenue in two thousand and eight was four point eight billion. Four years later, two thousand and twelve, the revenue was sixteen billion. A lot of it into earmarking. He says that the single spine cannot, uh, is a major... Look, def the deficit was 8.7. 
the single spine portion of it was 1.9. 1.9 out of 8.7. I said okay. that's how, not true. How? You are quoting wrong figures. But these are figures given by how your own bank of Ghana. Please, please, please. The deficit please. that what we're going to see was about three percent. Okay, so Fifi, so you are doing to him what you didn't want no, no, to do. No, no, but he's misquoting. No, these are quoting wrong figures. These are figures given by your own bank of Ghana. Show me. Show the documentary. Show the documentary now. Yeah, show it. Okay, okay. So I'm saying to you, you don't have the figures. You don't have the figures. So stop putting wrong figures. I mean, gentlemen, gentlemen, when you are putting figures, you are not showing us the figures. These are not figures that I know to have been authentic. disputed. Gentlemen, how are coming from there? You are not. Let's let's, let's be sincere and fair to the facts. These are not figures that we know have been disputed until now. Which are you talking about? Which figure are you talking about? Sorry, I'm running out of time, Nana. That's the point you wanted to make, and you have made it. No, I'm asking them not to fight with you. Okay. Thank you. That's what they are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Now, 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 Sam. Yes. Don't set your own questions. Let me set the questions. Now, we are told that we are told that as a result of this IMF bailout we are going for, utility prices are going to go up even further. You are told by who? Um, Antonio Akuto say, and I, I'm sure that you respect his views as someone who has a capacity to be able to speak to the economy, um, and also that government will be asked to cut down on its excessive expenditure, on which point? excessive expenditure, which which, mean? which which means that locally, locally, the ordinary man will have to tighten their belt once more. I, I, I shudder to think where Dr. Antonio Kutusa is coming from with this position he's taking. Okay, we, we are even yet to start discussions with the IMF. You have absolutely no idea what the IMF is going to be asking you. They for. are traditional standards. No, they no, are no. Known. Look, in, between 2009 and 2012, uh, utility price increases were not a basic yardstick <laughs> for them. Okay, rather, what they are focused on was a capping of the public sector. Uh, uh, numbers, not to increase our public sector. So clearly, it shows you that between 2009 and 2012, the yardsticks Dr. Antonio Couture is setting was not what the IMF used until we begin negotiations with them. And government has held its point and made this point clear, even before starting the meetings, that look, we have our agenda, we have our policies, and that's where we are standing with. But something, you see, the most important thing here is that the Ghanaian, the ordinary Ghanaian is going to be better off. And I'll give you a classic example. Fitch is supposed to release his next ratings in Sept on the 16th of September. Right. Already, already Fitch, Fitch is, is indicating that our decision to even go into a negotiation could result in an, in, a, in an upward review of our ratings. The euro bond we were going in for, okay, which is going to be used for the ordinary man on the streets, okay, it was supposed that the negotiations at, before we made this announcement mm -hmm. were looking at double figure percentages of interest. Okay. Right now, we are talking about interest rates of about 5%. Okay. This tells you that this is going to inure to the benefit of the ordinary man. When Kuku, government Kuku borrows at one cheaper minute. rates, yeah. one it's better for the ordinary man. Sorry, one minute. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, but we are run out of time. I'll take a look at the crystal ball. Okay. You've seen one. Yeah. 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 Why? Why? Now you're clever. Sorry. Sorry. Now you're clever. Sorry. 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 <laughs> Kuku, let's hear. That is They are malam uh, kukuba. Yeah. Homegrown <laughs> policies or mm. whatever it is. Mm. Uh, that's page 19. Rationalization of government employees. Paragraph 86. Consistent with the single spine pay policy, objective of enhancing productivity of the public service, government would undertake an exercise to rationalize public sector staff to ensure right sizing of the public sector. This exercise may involve an option for voluntary retirement. A current situation analysis will be taken in 2014, the results of which will inform the rationalization that will take place. The actual rationalization of staff is expected to begin 2015. Bottom line. So it's not an IMF policy. There will be retrenchment. It's not an IMF policy. It's a Eli government Eli policy. There will be retrenchment. No. Address the you point. see, I said, I, said I make the point that it's the IMF will enforce it because but we, that's what the, the question, the question is about discipline. We discipline. put the things on the paper and a we don't follow them. Discipline. And that's the point. A regime of discipline. Something that was in consensus in St. I am saying that I have looked in there. The question, when the question was okay, posed, no problem. they said we should wait, we shouldn't jump there. I am saying it is going to happen. That is why some honest admissions. And you know, Sanchez said so. He said all the pros and cons should be put out in the public domain mm. so you can win commitment.
to search harsh policies that are bound to come. Right. I like it's as simple as that. Like that. Right. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, you've been listening to us here on News File and watching News File on your multi TV Joy News channel. And you are also listening to us on Joy 99.7 FM and Love 99.5 in Kumasi Nova, a dozen affiliate stations. My name is Samson Ladi Ayerini. My guests have been Abdul Malik Kwekubaku Jr., uh, Sam George, Fifi Kwete, and Nana Akomia. The show was produced by Sede Mufori with support from Samuel Odami, uh, Kweku uh, Boating Chenchenhine, or Chenchenhine Boating, and Matilda Omega. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. The news is up next. And this show is repeated on this uh, particular uh, channel at 9.30 p.m.